Nagisa Oshima's classic film in the realm of the senses is a sensory and explicit retelling of a true story. The film invites criticism and controversy surrounding its use of detailed, explicit, and real sex within its scenes, almost throughout the entirety of the running time. The film has a very minimal focus on narrative. Two people, an innkeeper called Kichi and a serving girl working for his inn, Sada, begin an intense love affair that delves deeply into physical obsession sexual exploration, and even reaching the heights of troubling madness, the climactic peak of true ecstasy for Sada. Nagisa Oshima's film is considered a classic of art house cinema, and is essential Japanese art house viewing. However, debates tend to arise around the film about whether it can be considered a truly artistic film, or if it is simply pornographic. In Peter Bradshaw's review of the film for The Guardian, he states that this uncompromising film has not dated one iota, perhaps because films that are really about sex are still such a rarity, despite the supposed sexiness of everything that surrounds us. Most importantly, they are utterly incurious about each other's background. It is part of their ecstatic indifference to anything other than the present moment. Despite the ever-popular mantra of sex sells, if sex was a concept so widely and openly depicted in Western media, a film such as In the Realm of the Senses wouldn't cause the controversy it does. In the Realm of the Senses is about sex to its core, but also obsession. Peter Bradshaw suggests that the central characters in the film amid their affair have no interest in each other's backgrounds, but only show interest in the present when they are exploring each other to their physical depth. This obsessive affair even becomes tangled with how Sada and Kichi view the concept of time, especially with a scene when Kichi sleeps until noon, while Sada hasn't slept at all. Viewing the film can feel like a blurry timeline as almost each scene is populated by the sexual behaviour. How long does this affair last? When is it truly day and night? It's a delirious viewing experience and in some ways places the viewer in a similar loss for time that Sada and Kichi experience. The film's most explicit scenes explores sex with an incredible intimacy, with the camera's frequent close-ups on Sada and Kichi. These characters, as they are drawn intensely close to each other, the viewer is also drawn just as intensely close to the both of them, as if the viewer is in the moment with them. The camera's sense for documenting intimacy extends to film in how the two actors' bodies intertwine, with limbs resting or clutching, tangling together as if the two subjects become one, creating incredibly painterly images of their bodies together. With addition to how the scene is lit, the light resting gently on their bodies and the shadows accentuating their features, and how the sets are designed, very intricately detailed and crisp, these scenes of sex can be visually very beautiful. Between Sada and Kichi, lovemaking becomes more than just an act of stimulation, but it also becomes a philosophy. Every act they perform must be associated to their carnal desire for each other. From eating meals to transportation, any action allows the opportunity for these two characters to explore their physical and sexual limitations. The obsession for physicality, that neither can go or do anything without the other turning a non-sexual action into a sexual action, is emphasised with Sada. When the affair between Sada and Kichi truly blooms, Sada tells Kichi to never sleep with his wife again, or she will kill him. Her murderous rage boils early in the film when she is told to fetch a pail of water, only to return to see Kichi making love to his wife. She imagines cutting her deeply and watching her bleed out. This sequence where she imagines murdering Kichi's wife establishes early on that she has a possessive intensity. Her understanding is that if she can't have Kichi and only Kichi, nobody else should. This aspect of the film's scant narrative adds a layer of threat to where this affair inevitably leads to, the death of Kichi at the hands of Sada. Although the sex throughout the film is incredibly intimate. The decision to use actors having real sex together emphasising this layer of intimacy to an extravagant yet elegant standard. The knowledge of Sada's murderous rage underlying any action she takes also adds an element of tension. When is it exactly that Sada will kill? As the intensity of the affair increases, Sada's intentions become like a ticking clock, ready to sound the alarm.
In conclusion, Nagisa Oshima's film, In the Realm of the Senses, is a poetic exploration of obsession and intimacy. Despite the controversy surrounding the film and its use of real and very graphic sex, these scenes are implemented to emphasise the extent to which obsession and intimacy can be taken in film. Not only pushing the envelope for what can be depicted in cinema, the film also illustrates the dangers of obsession becoming madness with the character of Sada and her intensely possessive nature over Kichi. The film, while not necessarily easy to watch, the sex scenes are likely to be criticised as gratuitous, is a true pioneer and significant piece of Japanese cinema.